Hey guys, first weather here, and uh, I'm glad to be back. And I've been doing quite a bit of research uh, regarding uh, climate forecasting, and uh, especially re related to the winter of 2018-2019. And uh, I think I've learned I've learned quite a bit, uh, like some really interesting information. And uh, but this is basically going to be a winter discussion, um, not really a forecast, but a discussion of the winter. And I'm going to make a lot more of these videos, a lot more uh, preliminary winter forecast videos in the future. Uh, but today I really just want to go through a few things I find uh, quite interesting. And uh, yeah, so this is the CFS uh, V2 seasonal standardized uh, 2 meter temperature anomalies model. And it's a forecast for December through February 2018-2019 right here all right it's the forecast for that and um this is what the model basically spat out and again there are many 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 models um that make these sea surface temperature anomaly predictions this is just one of them i'm just doing this hypothetically to uh go through a, a, a scenario essentially and so as you can see what it's showing here is let me start off with the eastern atlantic so you have this warm, basically, pool of uh, waters right here. And then around that, you have this, uh, basically, this horseshoe shape of cooler than normal waters right here. And so that is often a sign of uh, a positive phase NAO. And so, and so when you have that warm water and then cold water wrapped around it in the, in the Atlantic, that's a sign of uh, a warm phase PDO. And that's not good for eastern uh, eastern coast snow lovers, uh, because what it basically does is the pressure gradients are so strong between that low and uh, that low pressure right here and then high pressure right here, that the uh, the winds basically the westerlies don't have time to bend down and go like this. So what ends up happening is uh, let me erase this real quick. What ends up happening is uh, you have a jet stream just go like this straight through. And obviously that doesn't give you any warm weather. It keeps all the cold air trapped in Canada, so these areas get really cold while the jet stream is flat here, right? Now here you have um, more of a uh, a warm uh, a warm face PDO type of look. You have this cooler ridge right, this cooler area of waters right here, and this warm area of waters right here, right? So look at that. Usually you have a high right here. You have you're gonna have a low right here, low right here. But the thing is, right here, normally this would promote cooler than normal temperatures in the east and warmer than normal temperatures in the west. But you see all these cool waters all the way from uh, down from the Arctic all the way down to Canada. That is typically a sign of uh, a warm phase AO because you have a very strong vortex and that basically prevents any air, cold air, from coming down, which means you have a flat jet stream. And that what that basically does is it, it promotes a jet stream that's very flat. So while here you might have um, some pretty good ridging and then dip down, a dip down, it's basically very flat over here. And that's why the model is showing warm conditions over here. And if, if um, I were making this forecast and if it was like November and I saw this, I would go with warmer than normal conditions for basically every single location of the country. Um, that that's the way I see it right now. Uh, if this was to verify, obviously this is just one model. Again, it's not even close to a forecast, just speculation, just discussion. So if this were if this was the case, you had a war, you had a positive NAO, you had a positive PDO, uh, positive AO. Again, you also have the El Nino. Uh, this would basically be how it look. This would be how it looks like, in my opinion. You have the warmest areas right here, but uh, the moderate El Nino, in my opinion, would influence the jet stream a little bit. So you would see a little bit of a dip right here. So uh, you would have closer to average temperatures right here, while you, the core of the warmth would be in this area right here, from the northwest to the southwest to the, um, to the, the plain states, the, the southern plain states, and the southeast. And that, in my opinion, that's where the core of the warmth would be uh, located, while temperatures in the upper Midwest would be around average, and then slightly above average in the northeast. So that's what I think would happen if this scenario played out. Obviously, when I'm making my real winter forecast, uh, my number one indicator will be analog years. So what I'll do is, 
I'll find, uh, I'll basically make an average of what all the weather models are saying for sea surface temperatures, and then I'll find, I'll basically make a map of all the sea surface temperatures, and then I'll go through all the years, all the winters, and find the map that looks the most similar to the one for this winter, and then I'll see what happened that winter, and then uh, basically base 80% of my forecast off of that. Obviously, there are a lot of other factors than just the El Nino, PDO, and AO, AO. There's uh, the QBO, there's sunspot activity, a bunch of other things that bear in snowfall cover, then also Canadian snowfall cover right here. That can also play a big, uh, that can also be a, a big role in determining the amount of cold air that comes down to the United States. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of factors, and I hope to get really uh, more into those as we get closer to, uh, to September, October, where I'll get a much better idea of what's going to be going on. Uh, with those factors. So right now, especially in late August, when I make my first preliminary forecast, I'll be relying more on just the models, relying more on that, that uh, El Nino forecast. And then as we get closer, I'll get the forecast more and more detailed, un uncovering more and more factors and adding that to my analog year. So my analog year uh, in September might be 1963, for example. And then in uh, December, it might be, in early December, it might be uh, 1978 because uh, from the QBO, the NEO, all that thing is becoming cemented, I uh, decided that that is not my analog year. So there's going to be a lot of vari variability and so I look forward to making that, um, going through that with you guys. Uh, but yeah, that pretty much sums up this video. I just wanted to have this cool discussion with you guys. So and to recap, if we had this situation, uh, warm face PDO, a negative NEO, negative and positive AO, uh, El Nino right here, moderate El Nino. I think the core of the warmth would be uh, right here. And then average temperatures right here. And then slightly above average right here in the northeast. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, please comment in the comment section below. Uh, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.